going through the book of Ruth in our Sunday night series. And last week we looked at the uh, introductory material and to chapter 1 of Ruth as we looked at this Gentile woman who is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Uh, this time of this is during the time of the judges. It's approximately 1,100 years before the birth of Jesus Christ that this takes place. And in chapter 1, as the author of Ruth begins this story about this remarkable woman, we learn that they go into the land of Moab, Elimelech, Naomi, and their two sons. There in the land of Moab, Elimelech dies. And then the two sons die, leaving only Naomi and Ruth and Orpah. Orpah is encouraged, along with Ruth, to stay there and find husbands, whereas Naomi said she will go back to her land in Judah. Orpah did not want to go, but she reluctantly went, and then Ruth clung, it says, to Naomi her mother-in-law. And therefore we see a tremendous amount of love and loyalty, as it says in Ruth chapter 1, as Ruth says to Naomi, your God will be my God, your people will be my people. And so we see a commitment there that Ruth had to her mother-in-law. And so they go back to the land and we see that uh, things kind of ended on a bad, sad note. As we left chapter 1, Naomi is rather bitter. In fact, she says, do not call me Naomi anymore, which means pleasant, but call me Mara, which means bitter. Therefore, there is a bitterness as to what had happened to her in the land of Moab. And so we begin here with chapter 2 as the story continues. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 we see that Ruth gleans in the fields of Boaz. Verses 1 through 7, There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. Now we're being introduced to Boaz. He is a relative of the family, a relative of Elimelech. That was Naomi's husband. Verse 2, So Ruth... The Moabitess said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him in whose sight I find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was the family of the family of Elimelech. Keep that sentence in mind. She happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered to him, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servants who was in charge of the reapers, Whose young woman is this? So the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered and said, It is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued from morning until now, though she has rested a little in the house. So here we have the setting of the reaping that's going on. And we see here that uh, Ruth has gone out to reap among those who are doing the reaping. We see that she is there. And as I said, I wanted you to remember verse 3. She happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. If you write in your Bible, you can make a little line out to the side of verse 3 and write the word providence. Providence. It so happened. This is God's providence at work. Because this happening will result in her becoming the ancestor 
of King David and ultimately the ancestor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is God's working here. It would be a blessing to the family as we will study later on in the book. And so we see that this relative here was a wealthy individual, a wealthy landowner. And he was gracious. He was a righteous man. And as a result, he showed kindness to those who were poor. We know according to the law of Moses that gleaning would take place for the poor. In Leviticus 19 verses 9 and 10 and Deuteronomy 24 verses 19 through 22, God would provide for the strangers and the fatherless and the widows. The law would forbid the owners from reaping the corners and gathering the gleanings of the harvest. They would leave the corners of their field so that the poor would come in and benefit from that. And what they would fall, what they would drop in their harvest, they were to leave on the ground. So the poor would come in and gather and benefit from that. That was God's way of providing for the, for the poor. Now notice this, the poor had to put out some effort. This wasn't a free handout. They had to do some work. You know, God has always wanted the poor to do something. And in 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 10 The Holy Spirit says through Paul, if a man doesn't work, neither should he eat. So God requires the poor to do something. And so the poor, Ruth being someone that was willing to work, would go and she would benefit from those corners of the fields that were left and from the gleanings that were dropped on the ground through the harvesting process. And we see here that God is at work in this whole situation As it says, she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. That is not a chance. That is God's providence that is at work. Now, in verses 8 through 17, Boaz extends kindness to Ruth. Verses 8 through 17 of chapter 2. Then Boaz said to Ruth, You will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not go to glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap, and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. He's providing protection for her. Very dangerous times, the times of the judges. Very wicked times when you read the book of Judges. And so now you see Boaz is showing his kindness by protecting Ruth at this time. And look at verse 10. So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me? Since I am a foreigner. She's wondering why that she is receiving so much kindness. Now the law of Moses again was to uh, be extended as far as kindness is concerned and mercy is uh, concerned. uh, To be extended to strangers and foreigners. Because all throughout the law of Moses it, it tells them, remember you were a stranger and a foreigner in the land of Egypt. So they were to extend kindness and mercy and help towards strangers and foreigners, those who were not of Israel, physically speaking. And so she's asking, why are you showing me such kindness since I am a foreigner? Now look at verse 11. And Boaz answered and said to her, It has has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, and how you have left your father and your mother in the land of your birth, and have come to a people whom you do not know before. The Lord repay your work, and full reward be given to you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. Now notice that beautiful statement there. Do you see that Boaz was aware of Ruth's reputation? Ruth had a reputation of being a good person. 
someone that took care of one of his uh, in-laws, so to speak, a distant relatives by, by uh, marriage. And so we see that Boaz is saying, it's fully reported to me what you've done. She had a reputation that was a blessing to her mother-in-law, and it was something that was very impressive to Boaz. And notice he says, because of that, may the Lord repay your work and full reward be given to you by the Lord of the God of Israel, Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. That's indicating that Ruth has now become a part of Israel. The word proselyte is not there, but the concept very much is. Remember in chapter 1, she says, your God will become my God, as she spoke that to Naomi. So she has become a part of Israel, even though that she was physically a descendant of the Moabite people. Look at verse 13. Then she said, let me find favor in your sight, my Lord, for you have comforted me and have spoken kindly to your maidservant, though I am not like one of your maidservants. Now Boaz said to her at mealtime, come here and eat of the bread and dip your uh, piece of bread in vinegar. So she sat beside the reapers, and he passed parched grain uh, to her, and she ate and was satisfied and kept back some. Verse 15, And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not reproach her. And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded those young men to do this. In verse 16, also let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her. Leave it that she may glean and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening, beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah or an ephah of barley. An ephah of barley was between 30 and 50 pounds of barley according to our measuring system. So we see here that Boaz is showing favor to her, and we see that a interest is growing here. A love interest is growing. The book of Ruth is very much a love story. And we see that there is interest that's being shown here to this Moabite woman, and we see that Boaz was not only interested in her physically, but also because of her reputation of being a good woman and taking care of her mother-in-law and having a reputation of someone who has taken refuge under the wings of the Lord God of Israel. You see, when young people date or when young people get involved in those of the opposite gender, we need to look not only at the outward appearance, but what's in the heart. And you see what's in the heart by the actions. Their actions speak louder than words. Their reputation. Go with people who have a reputation of being godly. Go with people who have a reputation of being upright. Go with people who have a good biblical reputation. Who have a good reputation among the brethren. Those are the ones that we want our children to be involved in. And so Boaz here is interested in her because of her reputation. And of course, naturally, there would be a physical attraction as well. And so he tells his reapers that are there reaping in the field, you let her glean among the sheaves and do not reproach her, even among these sheaves. And he says there in verse 16, when your bundles fall, he said, let the grain from your bundles fall purposely for her. So let some of it fall down so she can get it and let it be on purpose. Give her extra. Give her extra. And so we're reminded of the overflow of blessings that come. Here is a person not looking to take advantage of anyone. Ruth is not looking to find someone that is rich so she can latch on to them and exploit their riches. This is not a gold digger by any means. This is someone who is simply doing the Lord's will, helping out her mother-in-law. And this rich individual, Boaz, is seeing this great quality in her and says, bless her even more. Bless her even more. We see here that, the, that Boaz was a rich individual and he was also a godly individual. 
You see, we cannot automatically assume that someone who might have a lot of money or might be wealthy is not, un, not a righteous person or is ungodly. We cannot think in those terms because there are many godly people in the Bible that are set forth as examples to us who were wealthy individuals. Abraham was a wealthy individual. Solomon was a wealthy individual. In fact, God blessed him with riches beyond any man that's ever lived. Now, there were some problems Solomon had, of course. But we understand that it's not wrong to be rich. In fact, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul tells Timothy, you command those who are rich not to trust in their wealth, not to trust in their uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us abundantly all things. Tell them to be rich in good works, willing to share, to help those who are in need that they might lay up for themselves a good foundation and lay hold of eternal life. Do we not see that in Boaz? Someone who is wealthy and willing to help those who are in need. A godly individual who is wealthy at the same time. Naomi responds to what happens, this blessing that is given to Ruth in a very positive way. Verses 18 through 23. Then she, Ruth, took it up and went into the city that between 30 and 50 pounds of barley that she had. And her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. So she brought out and gave to her what she had kept back after she had been satisfied. Verse 19. And her mother-in-law said to her, Where have you gleaned today? And where did you work? Blessed be the one who took notice of you. She's very impressed seeing this bountiful generosity given to her and her family. And so she told her mother-in-law with whom she had uh, worked and said, the man's name with whom I work today is Boaz. And Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, blessed be he of the Lord who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. And Naomi said to her, this man is a relation of ours, one of our close relatives or one of our close kinmen. So when she heard that this was Boaz, this was something that was very positive in Naomi's life. And she heard about that, and that was something that caused her to, to pronounce a blessing on this individual. That the Lord, uh, blessed be he of the Lord, who has not forsaken his kindness to the living and the dead. Now she is blessing the Lord because she has now received a bountiful blessing from not only a wealthy individual, not only a godly wealthy individual, but one of her near kinsmen. Now that will come into play in in importance later on in the book of Ruth. So in verse 21, Ruth the Moabitess said, He also said to me, you shall stay close by my young men until they have finished all my harvest. And Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it is good, my daughter, that you go out with uh, with his young women and that the people do not meet you in another field. So she stayed close by the young women of Boaz to glean until the end of the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. And she dwelt with her mother-in-law. It's good, she is saying, because now you will be protected. You'll be protected from any harm that may come upon you because Boaz is going to see to it that you are a protected individual. Chapter 2 of Ruth is setting the stage, the beginning part, of them ending up in a marriage later on in the book of Ruth that will result in her being an ancestor of King David and an ancestor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Here is how it happens. And we see it here, the providence of God at work. You see, God is not concerned with where you came from. God is concerned with who you are and what you're doing in relationship to Him and His people. People could have said, well, she's a Moabitess. They're wicked people. They got started in a very wicked way when you read the origin of the Moabite people. And so they could have looked down upon her for simply being a Moabite person. Yet, 
as a foreigner among the people of Judah. She rose above that with her reputation. Her reputation of being a godly individual. And so even Boaz heard of that reputation and heard that she has sought refuge under the wings of the Lord God of Israel. That she now is a servant of his. And so the past doesn't matter. What you're doing now in your relationship with God is what truly matters. You see also in Ruth this humbleness and this willingness to work. She was willing to go out and do something. To earn a living so to speak. To, to, to get out and do the humble work of gathering to help herself and her mother-in-law. And so we see that, that Ruth is an industrious individual, someone who is not lazy, not sitting back waiting for someone to serve them, but someone who's willing to get out and do some hard work and do the labor that God expected the poor to do to receive a blessing from his hand. And we also see the kindness of, of Boaz, and we see that he was an upright individual, and we'll see that even more so later on in the book of Ruth. We see here great faith, a faith of someone who came out of a very difficult situation, and her willingness to work hard and her willingness to serve under the law of Moses became a blessing to Naomi. And it encouraged her. Remember how we ended chapter 1 with Naomi? Very bitter. Someone that was very down. The Lord had dealt treacherously with her. Had dealt bitterly with her. But now her attitude has changed. Because her daughter-in-law came in contact with Boaz. A near kinsman. Or a relative. Much more to be said about this. We'll continue, Lord willing, our study in the book of Ruth next week. Perhaps there is someone... Tonight that needs to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. All of this was done to bring Christ into the world. Galatians 4 and verse 4. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. Born of a woman. Born under the law. That he might redeem those who are under the law. So through Jesus Christ, we can have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Ephesians 1 and verse 7. So if you believe in Him and confess that He is the Son of God, repenting of your sins, we have water available and we can immerse you into Christ for the forgiveness of sins and He will add you to His church. If you've done that and gone astray, take this opportunity to repent and confess your sins and come back to Him. As always, the choice is yours while we stand and sing.